guys, back here again today with another video. We're outside on the bench, and I've been getting a lot of requests on the catfish setup that I use. And I was thought I'd make a little video today, kind of show y'all what what I do when I'm rigging up a a setup. And this all varies different whether you're fishing in a river with current or you're fishing in very deep water. I mean, your setup's going to vary. But the most common one that I use is um, I'll show you. I'll show you the setup right here. I have 50 pound uh, Berkeley trilene, kind of the fluorescent green for the sake of the video, so y'all could see some, so y'all could see. Um, what we have here is a full rot Gamagatsu hook, circle hook. I always love using circle hooks when I'm catfishing. Uh, we have a barrel swivel. We have these uh, anchor sliders. It's got a little piece of plastic. Put your line through and it's got a little clevis on the side, a little clamp on the side so you can adjust your weight. And you have a two ounce uh, disc weight here. And you could use an egg sinker or or any any other type of sinker but uh, let's get started now this is your main line that's connected to your fishing your fishing pole um, normally what I do is um, this is gonna be where your barrel swivel goes on before you put your barrel swivel on you have to slide your lead your lead slide and you have to stick it through your line you run that up and then normally you would just then attach your barrel swivel so your line doesn't get all twisted but with the weight of that lead sliding down the knot you're going to tie right here for your barrel swivel it'll just beat your knot up I mean it's going to be slamming back and forth back and forth and a lot of times that'll cause your knot to weaken and potentially you might lose some fish so what I do is grab these little beads you can get them in the fishing section or anywhere in the store any bead works and you just slide the bead over down the line and that's it then you're going to attach your barrel swivel now I my favorite knot is a Palomar knot to me it's one of the strongest knots and what I usually do is I double the line I fold the line in two so you have a little loop and then I put the barrel swivel on so the barrel swivel's got two lines running through it. And all you do is make an overhand knot. Make sure to give yourself plenty of slack. But all you do is just make an overhand knot with the double line. And you pass the barrel swivel through that loop that you have sticking out. It's very important that you don't forget that step. You pass it through and then cinch it down. And it usually helps when you wet it in the fastest ways with saliva. So you go ahead and wet that down. Just a little bit, you know, after all, have it all drooping down on there. But then you pull your, your main line and your tag in. Make sure the knot cinches down nice and pretty. You don't want it all ugly. You're sure they're not going to sit right. But using this 50 pound mono, the thicker line you use, the harder it is going to be for the knot. But for the sake of the video, there's your Palomar knot. All you do is clip your tag in. You leave a little sticking out. It's up to you. Uh, catfish are not line shy, so you don't have to have everything nice and perfect so after you have your barrel swivel you get another piece of line and right here instead of the barrel swivel you can also attach the uh, swivel snaps and at Walmart or any uh, bait shop they have the pre-made snails that are in the long packages and with the swivel snap all you, you would do is open it up and ha grab the pre-made swivel and stick it on there and clamp it and you're already done you're ready to go but I, I'm not a big fan of using those, not when I'm fishing for big fish anyway. Now, when you're fishing for perch or other things like that, smaller game, um, I'm smaller fish, um, I don't, it doesn't bother me to use them. So, what you do now, have everything sliding off the table. Since this other side is already tied, I apologize for the dog barking. Um, you can't do a Palomar knot since this side of the swivel is already tied. So what you, what I like doing is I tie a, a clinch knot. So in order to tie one of those, you pass your line through the barrel swivel. Give yourself about three or four inches of slack. This line is so thick it won't stay still. Three or four inches of slack. 
and you're gonna you're gonna pinch the line right at the base with your fingers, and you're just gonna twist the line around there about five or six times. And the smaller line, you might need to do it eight or nine times. But with this thick line, I'm gonna do it about five times, four or five times. Then at the bottom, you're left with this little loop right on the edge of that barrel swivel that you were pinching to make. So you're gonna pass your line down through there, through the hole, and you're gonna slowly start cinching your knot down. And you wanna wet it again with all your knots. You wanna kinda of wet them. And you just slowly, slowly start cinching that knot down. And it'll start getting tighter and tighter. You'll start seeing the little little barrels tightening down on themselves. You just make sure it's nice and tight. Make sure all the barrels are nice in a row and that is a very, very strong knot. So now you have your main line with your bead and your sinker. And then you have your barrel swivel to prevent line twists. And what you'll do is you'll just clip off your tag in. And that's it. Your barrel swivel is now in line with your uh, with your main line. So now, the last step, what you can go ahead and do is go ahead and put your weight on there. And for this video, I have a two ounce disc sinker. You just clamp it on. And then now that's what it looks like. Your sinker can slide and move. And then that, that bead hits on that knot, protects your knot, and you got your barrel swivel. So what you'll do is you'll come down from there and this is what's called your leader, your leader line. And uh, they can vary in length. You can have two foot, three foot, 10 foot, six inches. It all just kind of depends. I usually kind of like to make mine about a foot long. So you grab your four aught gamagatsu hook. And it can be six aught, two aught, whatever, whatever size of fish you're going after. And uh, once again, you cannot go wrong with Palomar knot. So you double your line over. Or you can pass it through the hook once and then pass it through the hook back. It's up to you. I just find it to be easier to uh, just grab, double the line over. Then again, that's with normal line, not this 50 pound <laughs> thick stuff. Just got to pinch it and get it to go through. But I think this line is a little too thick to shortcut it. All right, we'll just do it the normal way. What you do is you grab your line, pass it through the eye of the hook, give yourself quite a bit of slack, then you grab the same line and go back through the hook, but don't go all the way out. Just run it, run it in there enough to make it to where you have two lines and the hook is in the middle. And what you do is you do your overhand knot. Once you have your overhand knot formed, you pass the hook through this loop that you have, sticking out the other side, and you slowly just cinch it down. Once again, wet your knots. And make sure it doesn't get, see how it's kind of wrapped on the on the bottom end of the hook? You see right there on the, on the bottom end? You want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So you got to fold the line over the eye to prevent your line from getting under the eye of the hook because then the knot's completed and the knot's not as strong as it's made to be. So just make sure your knot cinches down nice and pretty and just clip off your tag in. I know it's kind of hard to see. I should have used some maybe braided lines so this line didn't bunch up so much. But that's basically a rough deal of my setup that I use. You have your main line, and what I usually do is like to fish with braid. So my main line going to my rod, this will usually be 60 pound braid. I like using high vis yellow, because you can see it really well in the, in the water, you can detect bites better. But then you have your uh, little slider with your weight and your bead. It stops it and protects your knot. Then you have your barrel swivel. You have about 12 inches leader. And then you have your hook. And with circle hooks, what I like about it is with most like regular J hooks, if you're not there like holding the rod in your hand to set the hook, 
you're 90 percent of the time you're going to lose your fish but with circle hooks how they're designed if you can see from a j hook it has that little little tip curved back they're pretty i'll put my hand there so you can see they're pretty wicked looking hooks and with that when the catfish bites down on that gets the hook in his mouth and the catfish turns to swim away as that hook comes sliding out of his mouth it'll catch it'll catch the corner it'll catch the corner of his mouth and you know if you're fishing with kids and you're having to pay attention to kids or you have other stuff or you're trying to take a nap while you're fishing um, you'll still catch a lot more catfish with the circle hooks rather than the J hooks and um, I've landed a lot more fish because just from fishing with circle hooks other than J hooks I mean J hooks have their purpose too but um, for catfishing, you really can't beat a circle hook. And Gamagatsu is a hell of a brand. So I appreciate y'all having patience with me if y'all made it this far in the video. And um, I, I like doing these uh, knot tying setups. If y'all'd like to see more of these in the future, uh, please leave a comment down below. Um, we're almost uh, 20 subscribers, so that's pretty cool. I was thinking about doing some type of special video at 25 subscribers. And uh, leave some comments down below on what y'all would like to see. Um, I guess thanks for y'all for tuning in. And we'll see y'all next time.